Jake. Yeah, I got it. Alright guys, we have made our first final table of Poker Masters. Now, if you're not familiar with what Poker Masters is, we've got four straight $50,000 buy-ins and one $100,000 buy-in at the end. All the 50Ks have one rebuy, 100K is a freeze out. And at the end of it, whatever player is cashed for the most money will win the purple jacket, which is like this thing, I think they're trying to go for like a golf type thing where you know how, the, how golf has the masters and you win like a green jacket if you end up like, I don't, I don't really know golf, so like some shit, I don't know, make some, make some holes and whatever. Um, so yeah, they're doing the same thing for poker. You know, is, is it kind of cheesy? Of course, you know, purple jacket rather than green jacket, call it the masters, but you know, I still think it's a pretty good idea. And, and you know, if you think about this, in terms of just high rollers, like how often do you get to play four straight $50,000 events than a 100K? Like doesn't happen basically. So um, I'm pretty excited that I got to be part of this. I think that uh, Poker Go is doing a lot of good work getting these shows together like Poker Masters, like Poker After Dark, uh, like the Super High Roller Bowl. So I definitely hope that we continue to see this uh, you know, in, in years to come from them. But anyway, let's talk about today. We're coming into the final table, second in chips, 1.44 million. Uh, the chip lead right now is Dan Smith. He has just a touch under two million. There's six million in play. So uh, this is definitely a situation where we have the haves and the have nots. We've got three guys over a million. Jake Schindler's the other guy, I think he's on 1.24. Um, and then there's a massive gap Jake down to fourth place. Next guy, I, I forget who it is, but I think they have around 600,000 chips, so a big gap from third to fourth. And then actually a pretty big gap from fourth to fifth. I think uh, fifth place has about 300K chips and uh, fourth has 600K. So we have a few really big stacks. We've got a few really short stacks. The big line's going to be, that's the, the uh, radar detector going off. Um, that's gonna be, you know, kind of the theme here. I think we're gonna see some short stacks battling it out. The big blind's gonna be 16,000 to start the day. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's right. So, you know, we got three stacks under 20 blinds. That's pretty short play. And then we have a few guys that are around 100 big blinds, you know, me, Dan Smith, and Jake Schindler, which by the way, worked out pretty amazing because I have three people that I bet against uh, against Daniel Negreanu to win the jacket, it's just a straight up cross book. I put 50K on me. 50k on Dan Smith and uh, only 40k on Jake Schindler and it's a cross book but I mean only for jackets not for any of the caches or anything if any of the three of us win the jack win the jacket then I win 50k from D eggs if he wins the jacket I lose 140,000 so definitely looking for me Dan or Jake to win this event today I'm uh, kind of kind of rooting for myself I'm not gonna lie but I'm okay if Dan or Jake wins it I think that would be um, you know, quite good for me as well. The thing about this, and this is actually causing a little bit of controversy lately at the event itself, is the system good to determine a winner? Because the way that's gonna work, there are gonna be 40-ish entrants in the 100K, which means first place in that event is gonna be like 1.5, 1.6 million, maybe 1.4, kind of depending on, on the exact field and stuff. But that means that whoever wins that event, obviously, will have won the most in any one tournament of any player. But if you think about it, first place today is 960,000. So you would need first place and then maybe a second in a 50K, the second place is around 550, 580. Um, you need a first and a second in order to beat first place in the 100K. So it seems really likely that whoever wins the 100K will end up winning Poker Masters. Now obviously it helps you if, um, you know, if you do well leading into it, if you have some caches, then maybe you could get third or fourth in the 100K and still take it down. But the 100K is gonna be massive in determining the winner of Poker Masters. We could even see someone come in and only play that event and then win the whole thing. But the question is, do we like the system or not? And frankly, I love the system because even though I get it, you know, the rebuys, you need to be ready to rebuy to try and win the jacket. Um, and also the 100K is way more important. 
Think about game shows. Normally at the end of a game show, they have double bonus round or whatever. I don't really watch any game shows, but that's a thing, right? Um, and so they'll, they'll have like a chance for people that are behind to catch up and win. Well, I think that's great. You know, if someone really crushes it in the 50Ks and they win two of them, that player is almost certainly going to win. But if you have maybe a, a min cash, I mean a small cash in 50K, in a 50K, you can still win the 100K and win the whole thing. So I think it's a good system. Uh, I think people complain too much. I think a terrible system idea would be a point system. Look, whenever I hear point system in poker, I'm just like, fuck it, I'm out. Except, of course, player of the year. Because we know how important it is, and that's why we play, guys. But anyway, I like the system. Excited to be part of it. Uh, hopefully, I can put up a pretty good cash today and put myself in uh, on the on the road to uh, victory for that jacket. But you know what? The thing is, jacket's kind of a small deal compared to the money. 960 up top. I got 100% of myself. Sorry, 99% because we do have a giveaway going. I'm going to be giving away 1% of my net profit from this series, which should be most of it. Probably sell a little bit in the 100K because, uh, yeah, it's a $100,000 goddamn buy in. But uh, other than that, I want all myself and all of the 50Ks, and I'm getting away 1%. So if you guys want to enter, the link is in the description below. You might be asking, where are we at on the week? And we bought him for one bullet day one, two day two. That was a quick minus $100,000 day and went home. Not a good day. And then one bullet yesterday. So, so currently we're in for right around 202,000. In fact, I think this will be exactly $202,000. And we at least will cash for 96,000. So if we get seventh, sixth or fifth, which would be honestly pretty disappointing because we are coming in second in chips. But if we did, We'd win, you know, most of our losses back. If we get fourth place, we break almost exactly even. We'd be down really small. Uh, we're only going to be up this week starting in third place. Third place is $300,000. We're going to be up 100 k and almost definitely going to make money unless I brick two bullets and then the 100 k which, you know, could happen, but likely to make money. If we get second place, like five seventy. dollars we're gonna for sure have around 300K profit or so. At least we're gonna have more upside if we can do better in some other events. So that's pretty sweet. And then uh, if we get first place, obviously we're crushing it. So the giveaway is at least $500. Got a shot and making it something like, you know, $6,000 today if I can take this down. Um, $7,000 if I can take this down. So uh, make sure to enter the twin in the description below, guys. Right, guys so we are here and i ran into my boy joe ingram okay, in up? the flesh now what's today up? guys today i checked twitter I'm earlier worried. today i'm worried right now i checked twitter and I'm i saw this right guy now. was saying if i win the tournament he's gonna shave his head if he gets 500 retweets but i think we already got there we right? got 500 retweets we already got 500 right? retweets yeah. okay my, my beautiful so, hair kid. so I, I i said i would personally be the one to shave it so if you guys want to see me shave joey's head by taking down the tournament leave a like on the video drop a comment he would look good bald, right? You actually, you know what? This might be what good for you. This might be good for you. You think so? Because you have the swimming bag. Yes. So you'll be more aerodynamic. That's one way to look at it, yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I mean, have you ever shaved someone's head before? I'm not, no. <laughs> oh my god, that's ridiculous. <laughs> this isn't going to be my first shot. But you know what? It's all right. It's, you know, it's just your Don't hair. Don't hurt me, bro. Yeah, just my hair. I, I thought it was pretty funny on Twitter. Like, they were like... There are people just like, no, and like that one girl, what's her name? She was like, don't Mandy, do it. Mandy, shout out to Mandy. Yeah, shout out to she, Mandy. She, she was like, you're very sexy with your hair long. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah, then the conversation got kind of weird, and I was like, the I'm, comments did get a little weird. I'm going to stop reading this. Once uh, it, like, this us making out or something, I'm like, yeah, let's, 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 not, let's not do that. Yeah, there, not, there was an eggplant emoji involved. Anyway, guys, so this guy's hair on the line. I'm excited. Hopefully, we win. You know, I'm pretty good at taking down tournaments. The problem is that you are. That's what I, I, I <laughs> and that's why I had to reconsider after I made it because you are really good at fucking these final tables, man. So either way, it's a win-win for me. I'm happy either way. So. All right, guys. If you guys want to check out Joey on YouTube, obviously link in the description below. Joe Ingram won. That's it. All right, let's see what happens. So here are the final table. We are joined by Carrie Katz. Now, Carrie, we played a lot yesterday. You made some maneuvers on some short stacks to get here. How do you feel coming into this final table? I feel, uh, if you're coaching, I've got a chance to pull out a top maybe four or five minutes. Wow. Wow. Very optimistic. How many chips do you have? Oh, I have 16 blinds. It's funny. 16 blinds. Yeah, you told me if you get, if you get to, what was it, 30, it's 20. over. 20. 20. Oh, 20 shit. Is over. You're close. I'm close. Well, I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck today. All right, buddy. See you.
All right, we're here on our first break. Not a very good first couple levels. I'm from 1.4 down to a little over 1, 1.1 in that range. Um, no too, too notable of hands so far, but still have like right around average stack. Six players left. Still a lot of time left to play. Got a lot of bigs. I think we're going to have something like 40, 45 big blinds left after this. So uh, still a lot of play. Looking to maybe make some moves and uh, see what we can do here. Making some moves? Making some moves. Wow. Two hours later. Well, that did not go as planned. We ended up getting fifth place. Uh, not a very fortunate string of events, but let's sit down and talk about one, maybe two of the biggest hands that we played from the session. All right, so let's talk about the biggest hand that I played at the final table. Um, the blinds are 15K, 30K, I believe. Uh, might have been 10, 25, but I think it's 15K, 30K. Bryn Kenny opens up under the gun to 65,000. Now, he's on a, a stack of 580K total, and it folds to me in the cutoff with pocket tens. So definitely for 19 big blinds, it's a hand that you're always gonna be three betting to call it off. Um, there's some interesting decisions to be made as to what size to three bet, I think. You could three bet pretty small, and maybe go something like 150 or so, um, leaving yourself room to maybe throw in a couple bluffs every now and then. But the problem with that, if you go that small, is um, you give him really good odds to flat. If he has some kind of hand, like maybe like a jack-10 suited, or uh, ace-jack off, or something like that, just to flat and try and play post-flop, which you know isn't really ideal, especially with hands like tens or ace king. Uh, you kind of want them to either jam or fold pre-flop. Uh, you don't really want to play as many flops because in a lot of those spots you're gonna get some tough post-flop spots, uh, and knocking him out of the pot is a bigger win. So anyway, I make it 175. Uh, I'm currently on about one point, let's say 1.3 million, 1.4 million, uh, and now this is where the hand starts to get pretty crazy. So. I make a 175. Now Eric Seidel, who's in the button with 480, he jams. So obviously not exactly thrilled about that. Uh, I think his range looks something kind of around uh, tens plus ace king, uh, maybe jacks plus ace king, maybe ace queen suited or nines, but I think that we won't see those very often at all. Anyway, he jams. Back to Bryn, and now Bryn thinks about it for a little while, and then he also jams for 580. So now we're in a pretty tough spot. We're calling 405 total to win a pot of uh, 1720 roughly. So we need around 23, 24% equity. And no doubt in my mind, we're gonna run into Jack's three aces a ton. No doubt about that. The question that this really kind of boils down to is, can either player have ace king? Uh, and I think Seidel is always jamming ace king over my three bet, so I, I think that he always has ace king if he's dealt a pre-flop. And then I also think that Bryn, you know, it, it's gonna be a pretty annoying spot for him with ace king, given the three bet and the four bet behind. Um, maybe he finds a way to let some of them go. Kind of hard to say exactly. I certainly don't think there's any way be folding a hand like ace king suited. Uh, and maybe not really ace king either, because if, if I have a hand like Jax, Seidel has queens or whatever, he's getting an ace king with a great spot. So um, I think that Bryn's probably always gonna have ace king as well. Which means, like, you know, both players can have ace king. Uh, we kind of have to go with tens. We only need 24% equity. And I know there were some people that were, like, kind of upset about the decision to go with it there, but I just want to kind of think about a big picture. If someone shows me kings or queens in that spot, then, you know, obviously I would fold because I would need, like, I need 23, 24% equity, and I would only have around 19, depending on suits and whatnot. Uh, but. The thing is, when they can't have ace king in that range, even if it's just part of the time, uh, then then you know I'm, I'm doing great. And if both players have ace king, I'm gonna have an amazing situation where I'm a huge equity favorite uh, to stack everybody. Now that doesn't have to happen very often to make the play, uh, you know, pretty solid. I mean, if that happens like only a few percent of the time, then we're easily getting the equity that we need uh, to call pre flop. So, uh, you know, definitely a close spot. Uh, I can understand some people thinking that they should fold. You know, I, I don't think that it's like an amazing call by any stretch of the imagination, but in general, when you have 20-ish blinds and hands like tens, after putting in, you know, six-ish blinds, you really don't have much of a choice except to, except to go with the hand. So, you know, I called, I was up against aces and queens, certainly not ideal, bricked that one, and we got down to around uh, 800K or so. Uh, so, after that, just a couple small flips, 
King 8 versus Bryn 6 is blind versus blind, lost that for half my stack. And then we had almost the exact opposite situation. I had uh, fours and he had queen eight, and uh, we flipped again, I lost that one too. So I lost flips, didn't run to ace king, didn't hit a 10. And look, you know, I, I, I'm not thrilled. To be honest with you guys, you know, I, I ended up, I guess like losing small this week, um, or losing small so far, only cash for like 140, but uh, so uh, yeah, not ideal. You know, not happy that we ended up losing, but uh, still got a couple of days left here, and hopefully we can make some kind of run. If not, guys, that's poker. Sometimes you give it your best, it doesn't work out. I'm really happy with, with how I played today, and uh, it's been a great year of poker. So, no complaining from me, even though I've been getting buried for the last month. Uh, that, that's the way the game goes. You win some, you lose some, and uh, hopefully we can get something going here in this last 50K. Alright guys, I got some good news. We made another final table. This time we're in first place in chips, not second. We're getting a chance for redemption. Also, a uh, bit of a smaller field this time, only about 820,000 up top. But uh, we do have around a fourth of the chips in play, a little over. So we have more chips relative to total chips than we had yesterday. We also are in first as second. My god, if I can't if I can't capitalize on this one, it's gonna be a pretty depressing week. But the good news is, I know you guys are worried about the giveaway. The good news is, if we get six or higher out of seven, oh, Phil Humby's over there. What up, Phil? Uh, anyway, if we get six or seventh out of, uh, if we get six, sorry, fifth or higher in the tournament, we will make money on the trip, profitable trip. And I think fifth or higher, and uh, we'll end up making, Phil, Phil. Phil! Phil! I'm doing a vlog, you wanna jump in? Quick vlog. What's up, Phil? All right, guys. How you doing, Phil, ran into him. How you doing, bro? Fucking tired, and there's no rest for the weary. I'm gonna go to Borgata. Did you make it? You're on the Borgata. Now? Did you make it to- I uh, made it, I'm chip leader. Oh, I'm sweet. I'm chip leader, yeah, thank you. You're not gonna save the 100K? No, because like, whatever, like, I, I think it's kind of, first, but if I can't win the purple jacket, and why stay? But I think first place in the hundred or the hundred might do it. Might be enough. Yeah. Are you grinding? Yeah. Phil is currently grinding. <laughs> what, what, are, what are you playing over here? I'm trying to sit out. Like PLO eight. PLO eight. I'm actually. That's, that's one of my better games. That's one of my better games. This site's incredible. Like I've been absolutely just. Nice. I just crushed. I just went like I bought an eight hundred. I. I have in front of me. Only been playing for half an hour. 3,000 or something. 3,000, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. So, so what's next? Head to Borgata. Yeah, so I mean, the 100K the hundred K is interesting, but I figured there'd be about 28 players, maybe 24. Okay. I think it'll be and, more than that. Well, if I knew there was 40 or 50, I'd play. Okay. But here's the thing, like, when I play in that, I'm, I'm like using my the fun. So, yeah, so, you know, I raise $600,000, $700,000 quickly. But if I play in it and I win it, it's not as, I don't know if it's prestigious as winning a WPT. Fair. And in the WPT, I have 100% of myself, and I have to be in Madison, Wisconsin on the weekend yeah. anyway for my dad's 80th birthday. Oh, wow. That's nice. So it gives me a chance, like, I haven't played the Borgata yeah. WPT in 12 years. By the way, for you guys that might not know, after he beat me in King of the Hill, fucker, <laughs> after he beat me in one King of the Hill, he got second place in a WPT event, almost took it down, had the guy all in. 763 players! Oh, I That's needed that solid, title! Man. I needed that title! You had him all in Ace, King, King, Queen, right? You had Ace, King? Yeah, yeah, but I didn't have them all in at that point. Oh, but still, I heard you wrong. Okay. Anyway, so keep it going, man. Awesome, like, Every time I see you win, I'm always excited. And we played a little today. Phil was By playing the way, this guy, fast, fast this guy, loose. just so you know, this guy is great for poker. Great for the game. Almost everybody loves him. Maybe Almost. not, maybe not Daniel on the ground yet. <laughs> Did you win him over yet? We, we've been uh, we've been doing a little better lately. A little better. We, we yeah, talked yeah. a bit. Um, we actually we, we came in the other day from from ballet. And uh, like I valued, he valued behind me. He haunts the horn. I look around and see him on the ground. So we got to talk a little bit on the way in. And uh, basically, you know, I, I think even though we definitely disagree on a lot of stuff, 
you know, we, we came to kind of an understanding-ish. I wouldn't say we're like good friends or anything, but like it's, it's a little bit better, it's a little bit better. Uh, we'll and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever have a chance to go out drinking, this is your guy, nice. and I'm your guy, because nice. we're always going to have a lot of fun. Actually, we have a drunk video out, don't we? We, we do, we're the one you and I in Philly. Earlier on the channel, earlier on the channel, man. I just saw Jungle Man, uh, and I I just went over to Bellagio, and uh, and I told him, uh, I told the guys, he's a fun one to have drinking too. Yeah, J Jungle is, uh, I mean, frankly, Jungle is a good time no matter what. Yeah, yeah. He gets so, he's, in, a, in a way, he's kind of like you. When he loses, he gets so mad. Yeah, yeah, he, so just, he mad. hates losing. So I, I have to ask you one last thing before I let you go. How good did it feel when the Queen Jack Club worked? How good did that feel? Oh, that was pretty amazing. Because, because that, hand, that hand has been like the talk of the town for the last month or so. It's been pretty amazing. Had I won the WP, I almost had the perfect week. But yeah, I did. probably didn't, I probably didn't honor poker quite like I should have because, so after I left New York Thursday night, um, and I played with you guys in the cash game Thursday, I, I was in LA and I happened to my friend's jet for the fight to Vegas and back. We were here at the Ari in the High Limit Room. And then the next day, and then we flew back, and then he owns the Dodgers, so we sat in the front row and I went in the locker room to hang out with some of the players. And so I didn't even play day one A, day one B or C in that event. So I have to, but, but I finished second, so that's good. Second's pretty good. So flying to Borgata, I really feel like I'm honoring poker. You know, I'm really like, I'm putting in the time, you know. I, yeah, I haven't man. played in a you, WP, you, you, I haven't played a WPT in the East Coast in six years. Maybe seven, maybe they're, they're far away. They're far away. Well, the problem is you fly all the way out there, and then I would get in with Kings against the amateurs, Jacks, or the other pros, Jacks. I don't understand why. Why do they, I mean, because I don't go crazy. They object. Although, I will say, Phil, I saw a hand where you threw back Queens, the guy jammed, you folded, and he showed you a four. That happened, right? That happened. So, if I call and win, uh, there's 13 players left, there's a 30% chance I'm out of the tournament, where I would have had uh, 3.8 million. Instead, I ended the day with 3 million, risk free without ever being all in, and made the final six. That's why I do shit like that. I thought the world would figure that out, but they don't. They so don't. These goddamn kids. I played one all in pot in that tournament in five days. And I folded two hands, I probably shouldn't have, maybe three. Two of them for sure I shouldn't have folded. I didn't mind the queens actually. Okay. But but I don't play. Even like when we showed you the four, you're like, you still feel good about it? Yeah, because then I risk free ran my chips up anyway. Okay, good. Like you. if you if you have the white magic, if your reads are perfect, you just win chips anyway. Alright, well so that's why, something for the viewers at home. I don't like getting in with kings or queens. Aces I can't help, but you know. yeah, that's poker. Alright, well have a good trip, man. Thank right, you for stopping by joining the vlog. Great to see you. Good to see you. All right, so that was actually pretty cool. We're going to fill on the way on the way out here, but we're going to be back chip lead. Guys, I have not won a tournament in so, so long. It's been like two full months. And uh, this is it. It's our chance. It's the last 50K vlog. <laughs> uh, last 50K, and uh, then on to the 100K freeze out. So it's really fucking loud. It's Saturday in Las Vegas. There was some boxing fight. People are going to the club and some shit. I'm not. I'm headed home, putting on the PJs, coming back at noon. And guys, by the way, don't leave your boy hanging. Hit that subscribe button. Oh my god, this is this is a zoo. This is a madness. Don't leave your boy hanging. Hit the, sub the subscribe button in English again. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Fuck it, we'll do another vlog. Let's go.